you know, Haiti is actually, it's been interesting because they've been together for, you know, almost a whole month, right? They've been playing in those, those qualifiers, World Cup qualifiers against Canada. Um, and they had these Gold Cup rounds. And I think it's going to help them. Uh, I really do. I think it's going to, you know, bring cohesiveness to their team. Regarding our group, you know, it, this has been a player pool that we've been working with for, for two years. There's, there's only a couple guys that haven't ever been involved with, with our program. Um, you know, so we hit the ground running. There were some concessions we needed to make for to, to get the guys playing with their clubs and to accommodate our schedule in the Nations League. So we just had to do that. You know, the FIFA window was open and we opted to bring them in on, on July 5th. So, you know, that that is what it is. That's something we're going to have to deal with. And, um, you know, we're we'll be ready to go tomorrow. John Goodwin. Hey, Greg, I appreciate the time. Uh, last time we chatted, I asked about Buzio and you said you were looking forward to you know, being able to finally coach him. Uh, so just curious now what you've seen from him. Do you have a better idea of where he might fit into this midfield and how you might use him through these group stage games? Yeah, you know, he's been a guy I've been really impressed with. Um, just really intelligent soccer player, um, reads the game well, technically very, very good, has a, you know, has a great work rate, great engine, um, good anticipation. I've been really impressed with him and, and what he's done so far. You know, we're looking forward to getting him on the field, seeing what he can do in international competition. And I think, you know, he's one of these guys that that's earned that opportunity. Now, whether he starts tomorrow or comes in as a sub or, starts another game, you know, we think he's going to play a role on um, this tournament and we're, we're excited to, to work with him. I have Scholar Seb. Uh, Greg, uh, two, two different topics for me. First, uh, when the rosters came out for, for the Gold Cup. I like how you phrase that, two different topics instead of two different questions, Ivis. You're getting, I'm I'm getting that's I'm nice how you're doing that. Ready. I'm just getting yeah. ready. Uh, when the rosters came out, uh, Mexico had close to a full strength squad and, and that might've surprised some people. Uh, what did you make of that when you saw that? Were you surprised by that? Do you think that was a reaction to losing in the nation's league? And my second question is about the number six role, defensive midfield role in your system. How, how is, how is your interpretation of that role evolved and how much of a challenge has it been for you to kind of find players that could fit and play it the way you would ideally like it to be played? Is it, is it one of the most, if not the most challenging position for you to kind of, address and fill in this pool? I don't think so. I think it's a, it's a very influential position. I think any challenges regarding that position is, is a welcome challenge. We'd like to see different profiles and how different profiles can interpret the position. But for us, it's a pivotal, it's a pivotal spot on the field. Um, you know, the movement, the movement of that player, the ability for that player to, to get the ball, get on the ball, um, you know, sets up a lot of our attacks. His positioning sets up our attacks. The defensive work sets up our attack. Uh, um, the defensive work, set, you know, sets a good tone um, on that end of the field. So it is a pivotal position for us, but it's exciting to work with all these different profiles. When I think about, you know, started with Michael Bradley, who's very experienced, um, you know, had a good understanding for that role. Then moving into to Jackson and to Tyler Adams and to Kellen when we moved him there looking at Gianluca Buzio, potentially Eric Williamson, you know, there's, there's some interesting players in that position. Um, and the first question I completely forgot. So remind me again. Oh, Mexico's roster. Everyone, you know, all these coaches have a plan, right? So Tata, there's no chance that he reacted to, you know, a loss in the nation's league and said, hold on, we need to, we need to get this group together. They have a plan of how they want to develop their uh, squad for world cup qualifying and so do we. And our, our plan involves, um, you know, using a different roster in this tournament. Uh, and, you know, that's fine. We see this as a great opportunity for, for very good players to compete for a Gold Cup title. We know this is a, um, an outstanding tournament. We know this is a very important tournament for our region. And when you look at the talent playing in this tournament, it's going to be exciting. Ryan Tolmich. Hey, Greg, I also uh, wanted to ask about Gianluca a little bit, but less so about how he fits on the field and more so the off the field stuff. You know, looking at him, this has this could be a life changing summer for him, both with his first cap with you guys and also these transfer rumors going on. And, and that could be a lot for someone his age. You know, how does he kind of fit in with this group, you know, with his first camp here? And what is it about him and his personality that kind of makes him ready to take this leap at such a young age? 
he's calm. He's calm and he's mature for his age. You know, really, you know, just really relaxed guy. Um, not relaxed in, in the sense that he's uh, aloof. He's, he's relaxed in the sense that he's really comfortable with who he is and he's really comfortable being here. The guys have, have warmed to him nicely. The coaching staff have had good communication with him. And, you know, everything we preach is about, you know, winning the day, being the best today, trying to use today to get better. And that's, that's the approach that you need, even when you have, you know, a big tournament coming up or, you know, these transfer rumors coming up. It's just about what you do today. And if you string enough good days along, you know, good, good things will happen. We'll take two more questions. Manuel Medina. Hi, Greg. This is Manuel Medina from TV Sports in Mexico. Uh, uh, talking about Gianluca, he said yesterday something um, that I found very interesting. It was that is taking motivation from winning the Nations League to try to win the Gold Cup. How, how did you talk to the players? How can you get this momentum and get it so you can get first to the final and then secondly to win this tournament? Thank you. I think, you know, that, that's the objective from day one. And, um, you know, we're, we're focused on competing to win this trophy. Uh, you know, in August 1st, we want to be playing in the final and at night we want to be winning. Uh, we know it's a, a difficult task. We know there's some good teams in this tournament, and we don't want to disrespect any of the teams in, in the tournament. But for us, it's about taking it game by game, putting it, everything you got into that, that game, and then moving on to the next one. And we think we have a really talented group. It, it's a young group for sure, but there's some talent here, and we're, and we're looking forward to getting the tournament started. Anthony Christensen. Hey coach, I just wanted to kind of touch on the uh, kind of the situation in Haiti with kind of the unrest going on there. I was wondering if you think that might affect the way that they are going to approach the game or how they're going to play it all. And if that's something that you kind of have to take into consideration yourself. Well, you know, first of all, there's, there's a lot more, there's a lot of things more important than soccer, you know, and, the, and this is certainly one of them. And we, we are thinking about the Haitians. Um, I'm thinking we're thinking about their team. And we know it's not an easy time for them. Um, so, you know, it, it's something that, you know, in sport, sometimes, you know, actually participating in sport gives you that freedom and gives you that, that feeling where you can put your mind somewhere else. But, you know, we're certainly thinking about their team and, um, and hoping all is well.